Miguel looks so sad. Of course she's sad. Charity's been trapped in the fiery inferno of hell and he's been powerless to save her. He loves her more than anything. Yeah, I know how he feels about her, okay? Okay. It just doesn't make any sense. According to those documents I found on the internet, the evil had to be destroyed in a slayer in order for Charity to be released from hell. Well, when Miguel opened that box, it should have killed the evil, but Charity's still not back. Oh. I hope she never does come back. I have faith in your power and, and in my love for Charity, but I'm gonna need all your strength for what I have to do. Miguel, what is going on? What are you planning to do that requires so much strength from the Lord? Too bad Chad and Whitney had to leave. It's so wonderful seeing them so happy together. Well, you know what's even better? What? Seeing you so happy. I'm always happy when I'm with you. It's nice to see Ethan so happy. He deserves it after all that he's been through. Finding out the truth of his paternity test has been devastating to him. I have to admit, they do look happy. Hmm. How about you, Cheryl? You happy? You'll never see children with the man you love. Come on, talk to me, honey. You happy? You know, I've been thinking about our wedding. Well, what a coincidence, because I never stop thinking about it. Look, I know you want to have a traditional wedding, but I was thinking we might add something personal to it. What do you mean? We write our own vows. That way we can give each other a special message about how we feel. Gosh, that, that's a wonderful idea. But can we have the traditional vows, too? I mean, I have dreamed of saying, I do, since I was a little girl. Well, of course we can. But also, I want everyone to know how much your honesty means to me. And that the most important part of our relationship is trust. The time has come for you to be honest with Ethan. Tell him. Tell him you knew, Teresa. Explain to him why you didn't tell him and, and hope for understanding. Because if you wait and he finds out on his own, he will never believe you. He will never believe that you never had anything to do with that letter getting to the tabloid. Jerry, Mrs. Crane. Do you know who sent that information about Ethan's paternity to the tabloid yet? I'm sorry, Mrs. Crane, I haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet. Jerry, you're the head of Crane Security. Certainly you should be able to get some answers. Oh, just get over to the house right away. I am not going to rest, and neither will you, until we find the person who divulged my secret to the disgusting tabloid. Sending that email from Teresa's computer was brilliant. It'll look just like she sent it. And once Ethan finds out Teresa knew all along he wasn't a Crane and didn't tell him, he will dump her and come running back to my Gwen. Not to mention the fact that Ivy will rip Teresa to pieces. It's perfect. And Ivy will never know I had anything to do with it. Rebecca, you bitch. I know exactly what you did. I would hold the hand of the one who could leave me places. Lips of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high as breathe in, breathe out You keep me alive You are the fire burning inside of me You are my passion for life You know, I can't wait to stand up in church and tell the whole world what an amazing woman you are. You know, a woman who's sweet and beautiful 
Intelligent and most importantly, honest. You know, the wedding ceremony it will be beautiful. Hey, it's the bride and groom. Oh, did you guys finish taking your pictures? Yes. We're heading over to the seascape now for our reception. You must be so happy. I feel like the luckiest man in the world. That is so romantic. You know, I can't wait until we're married. When's their big day? We're getting married as soon as we can. Oh, you must be knee-deep in preparations. Well, actually, we haven't had time to do much of anything yet. We just decided to get married right away. Can I give you some friendly advice? Of course. I mean, I can never hear enough about weddings. Well, if you're getting married soon, you better start planning now. You would not believe how much time it takes to organize a wedding. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, Ethan. You know, she's right. We're way behind. I mean, we have to get invitations, plan the rehearsal dinner. We have to find hey, a place honey, for the honey, reception. Honey, we have to calm call the down. Church. Take a breath. Oh, my gosh, but there's no time for that. We have so much to do. Well, you've already worked out some of the plans with my mother, right? Well, yeah, but that was before, before you found out that you weren't a crane. But, you know, things are a little different. The budget's a little different now. Yeah, I guess I wasn't thinking about that. No, but that doesn't matter. Now, come on, let's go to my house. We have so much planning to do. Well, <laughs> Teresa, I, I love you, and I want this wedding to be perfect for you. As long as you are there to exchange vows with me, it will be. Oh, baby, tell me, are you happy? Yes, yes, <laughs> I am. Good. Now you're still thinking about what happened at the Chinese restaurant, aren't you? I know it sounds silly. But you said that the love noodle test was a harmony tradition, and every couple that's meant to be together passes the test. But we didn't pass the test. Yeah, but the it doesn't broke. matter. It doesn't matter, okay? All that matters is how much I love you. We got enough love to last for a lifetime. All right, well, what about my fortune cookie? It said that I would never see children with the man I love. I, I can't even bear the thought of that. Well, then just don't think about it. All that matters is our love. Lisa Sheridan, we have to get going. There's a million things that we have to do, and we need your help. What's she talking about? <laughs> Wedding plans. Oh, man. I hope you know what you're getting yourself into. She gets that look in her eye. Watch out. I know exactly what I'm getting into. Couldn't be happier. Oh, I love you. Mm. Now, come on. Let's go. You two. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ever be us, Louise? Will we ever be husband and wife? I know exactly what you did, you conniving witch! Uh, honestly, I, I, mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, spare me the innocent act. I know how you plotted and planned. I can't imagine what you mean. The nerve of you having your tacky furniture delivered to my bedroom! Oh, well, you know me. I just hate to procrastinate. I want to get a jump start on redecorating my new home. After all, there is so much to be done. This is not your home, Rebecca. It is my home. I am Mrs. Crane, and I am not about to give up the title. Oh, Ivy, darling. Have you forgotten that your husband has already started the divorce proceedings? I mean, in no time at all, Julian and I are going to be man and wife. You may have an engagement ring on your finger, Rebecca, but I have a wedding ring on my finger, and that counts for a hell of a lot more. Sorry, Abby, but there is absolutely nothing you can do to stop us from tying the knot. Well, that's where you're wrong, Rebecca. There's always something I can do. And what I'm going to do right now is I am going to pull your poorly colored hair out of your head, strand by strand, you <laughs> big <laughs> Why do you need strength from the Lord, Miguel? It's just that, um, it's been really hard since Charity disappeared. I understand. You love her very much? With all my heart. I know how difficult it was for you at the Bennett house. 
when you were unable to rescue Charity from the fires of hell? It was horrible seeing the woman I love in pain and not being able to do anything about it. Mijo, you have to have faith. Hmm? Father Lonigan believes that Charity will be back. Yes, Mama, I know she will be. Very soon. Hi, Mrs. Lopez Fitzgerald. What are you doing here? Well, I stopped by for coffee on my way home, but since I ran into my son, I think I might stay and have a good uh, No, coffee. Mama, you can't stay here. Why not? Well, it's, it's just that you look so tired. You, you should go home and get some sleep. Oh, you don't need to worry about me. It's you that I'm concerned about. I know how distraught you've been since Charity's been gone. Uh, I, I would feel better if you went home and got some rest. Besides, we were about to leave anyway. We were? Oh, yeah, we were. I was just, my brain's a little fried from looking at all these CD-ROMs. <laughs> right, then I guess I'll go. Just have faith, Mio. I will. And, uh, Mama, mm -hmm. remember how much I love you. I love you, too. And I'll tell Luis and Teresa I love them, too. I couldn't ask for a better family. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Take care of yourself, Mama. All right. Bye. Bye. What was all that about? Where are we going? We're going back to Kay's right now. Miguel, you're acting strange. All right, why didn't you want your mom around? I didn't want her to know that this could be the last time I see her. What? what? I'm going to save Charity tonight. I'm going back to hell to save her. What's going on? Oh, Mrs. Hotchkiss thinks she is moving into my house and I am sick and tired of her presumptuous attitude. You're right, Ivy. I was presumptuous to order that furniture. I hope you'll accept my apology. What are you up to now? As long as everything's under control here, I'll be right back. Yes, Jerry, I have everything definitely under control. So what are you up to, Rebecca? You have never apologized for anything in your entire shallow life. So why are you apologizing now? Because I truly am sorry. Well, I mean, I know how much you've been through lately. But with Ethan finding out that you have been lying to him his whole entire life about his real father, I, I just don't want to cause you any more stress. Oh, being in the same room with you causes me stress. Which is exactly why we should resolve this whole situation in the best possible way for everyone. Oh, and let me guess, the best possible way for everyone is, mm, you get everything, I get nothing. Hear me out. I know you're concerned that once Julian divorces you, you'll be left penniless. Julian is not going to divorce me! So what if I was to use my considerable influence on Julian to... Well, to convince him to leave you a nice, big, fat divorce settlement. Would that be incentive enough for you to step aside and let Julian and I become man and wife? Okay, Ethan, you start making a list of people we should invite, and I'll try to tack down a, a place to print the invitations. Honey, you calm go. down. Oh, um, look, Mama! Oh, thank God you're here. Uh, we have to start planning for our wedding, and we have to start right away. Yeah, so much for calming down. Oh, I barely even know where to begin. See, that, it will all get done. Look, I don't mean to be a downer, but maybe you should think about doing some planning for after the wedding. Well, what do you mean? Well, have you two even thought about where you're going to live once you're married? Well, no, but I know where you can live. I'll build an addition onto the cottage. It, it, it'll be perfect. Oh, look, that's sweet of you, but I can't let you do that. Of course you can. It would be my pleasure. No, look, I need to start building my life on my own. I'm not a crane anymore. I can't live on the crane estate. Well, uh, you can always stay here. No, absolutely not. Thank you for your hospitality, 
But I need to provide for Teresa. I need to give her a place of her own. Ethan, I will be happy anywhere that I am with you. Well, unfortunately, happiness doesn't pay the rent. Do you even have any work lined up? Not yet, but I, I have set up some interviews. Now you'll have no trouble getting a job as an attorney. Once they take a look at your impressive resume, they will hire you on the spot. Oh, I haven't even made up a resume yet. Well, you probably should. It's the first thing an employer's gonna ask for. I know. It's just, Cranes have never needed a resume. Well, don't worry, Ethan. We'll help you. Of course we will. And you know what? I have a resume program on computer. It'll get done in no time. <laughs> Teresita, before you use the computer, the files on Ethan's paternity, they're deleted, right? Of course, Mom. All right, because it would be a disaster if you found out that you knew the truth all along. But I, I don't understand. I thought you wanted me to tell Ethan the truth. Well, I do. But I think it would be terrible if you found out by accident. He would be very angry with you. Well, there is no need to worry. The files are... Definitely not on my computer anymore. Okay. It's time to start planning our future. Ethan and Teresa are so lucky to have a future together. But what does my future hold with Louise? You are some piece of work, Rebecca. Do you honestly think I'm just going to roll out the red carpet so you can tramp your way into my home? Don't take your anger out on me. I am not the problem here. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I must have just imagined that you manipulated my husband into proposing to you. Uh, look, let us not forget that we are all in this situation because the tabloid had the information about Ethan's paternity. You don't have to remind me of that. Well, if I were you, I would be spending all my time and energy trying to find out who divulged that secret. You know, Rebecca, I'm not an idiot like my husband, blinded by your assets. You want me to concentrate on finding out who sent the email, so I won't come after you. That's not the point, is it? The point is that your number one priority should be trying to find out who destroyed your life. I'm sorry for the interruption, Mrs. Crane, but I know how important this investigation is to you. Yes, it is. Just come in and give me a full report. It's all right, you can talk in front of her. Unfortunately, we've been completely stymied by the tabloid. There are certain confidentiality issues involved. Oh, I am not going to rest until I find out who destroyed my son's life. We've got to find out who sent that email to the tabloid. Well, isn't there any way to find out whose laptop the email came from? Rebecca, how do you know that the email came from a laptop? Okay, the program's up and running. Where should we begin? Ethan, you received a ton of honors from college and law school. You should definitely point those out. That's a great idea. Yeah, well, from what I've seen, employers are usually interested in actual work experience. Well, um, I've really only worked for Crane Industries. I mean, even during the summer when I was at law school, I worked with uh, Grandpa, Alistair. <laughs> well, Crane Industries is certainly an impressive name to have on your resume. Yeah. Do you have any idea what kind of recommendation Alistair would give you? No, not really. But uh, Julian and Alistair usually only save kind words for those who share the same last name. Crane. Who cares what Julian or Alistair say? You have an undergraduate and law degree from one of the top schools in the country. Who wouldn't hire you? Teresa's right. All you have to do is set up some interviews. Any employer would see what an asset you would be to their company. Well, I hope you're right. Let's get started. Louise, um, there's a lot of dirty dishes in the sink. Would you help me? Excuse us. Uh, 
Oh, cleaning dishes. I know it's always your code word for serious talk. So what's going on? Well, Sheridan seems upset. Is everything all right? Yeah, sure. Everything's fine. I know you well enough to realize when you're not telling me something. All right. I took Sheridan to Sally's house of noodles. And we, yeah, <laughs> we took the love noodle test. I remember when your father and I passed the test. Everyone said that if two people were meant to be together, the noodle would stay intact until the couple ate their way all the way to the middle and then kissed. Fortunately, our noodle broke. Sorry. To add to that, she got this fortune cookie that said she was ever going to have children with the man that she loves. Oh, that's terrible. Sheridan's been so hurt, and she's always feared that she would lose her true love. I tried to tell her it meant nothing, but nothing helped. I don't mean to pry into your personal business, but I, I would like to ask you something. Sure, Ma, you can ask me anything. Will Sheridan once again lose love, or do you see yourself making a commitment to her? Did you really mean what you said, Miguel? I mean, are you really even going back into hell to rescue Charity? Yes. All right, I can't sit back and do nothing while Charity's in danger. But, Miguel, something terrible could happen to you. I don't care. All right, I I'd rather have something terrible happen to me than spend the rest of my life without Charity. Don't you remember how horrible it was the last time you tried to rescue her? I mean, the flames and the demons were worse than something out of a horror movie. Don't! She needs me! Ah. Oh, Miguel, you're so horrible! You can't go in there! You must wait! You are not fully prepared! I have to save Charity. Ah. No, no, no! No, no! no! <laughs> Charity! Of course, I remember. All right, but Charity's the one who's suffering. Okay, there's some technicalities we need to work out first. Like, how are you gonna get into hell? The portal's been all closed up. I'm gonna open the portal myself. What? How? I'm, I'm gonna summon the power of God to open the portal, just like Father Lonigan did. Oh, Miguel, you're not a priest. It, it doesn't matter. Look, uh, the angel I saw said that my faith and my love for charity would give me all the strength I need. No, Miguel, you can't risk your life. I'm sorry, but this is something I have to do. Lord in heaven, I'm calling upon your power and the power of my love for charity to help save her from the fires of hell. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I command the demons to show themselves. Show me the fires of hell. Angel said that my faith and my love for charity were very powerful. And I was sure I'd be able to open the portal to hell. Miguel, maybe this is a sign that we shouldn't try to rescue charity. I'm not giving up. It's too dangerous. I mean, what if you get trapped in hell? What if you never come back? I will. And I'll have charity with me. You're really brave, Miguel. My love for charity gives me strength. There's something bothering me. I mean, I feel like there's more information that I need. I'm right here, ready for action. Anything you need to know. Look, thanks, Reese. But I don't think it's anything that you can find on your computer. Okay. Is there something else about Charity being taken into hell that, that I don't know? You didn't help me, Kay. You let them put me in here. I'm sorry, Charity, but I had to do it. You've hurt me very badly, Kay. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Kay, is there something I should know? 
I'm waiting, Rebecca. You said that the email to the tabloid came from a laptop computer. How would you know that? Did I say that? Oh, I am such a ditz about computers. I mean, laptop, desktop, typewriter, it's all the same to me. You seemed pretty sure when you said it. Well, well, all I meant was that if you find out who sent the email, then you'll have the culprit. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Tabloid won't even speak to us. My God, this is a tabloid we're talking about, not the White House. Certainly there's something you can do. Uh, actually, I know exactly what you should do. Well, if there's anyone who knows how to scheme, Rebecca, it is you. So what's your plan? Plant someone at the tabloid? I mean, if you get someone a job there, they'll certainly have access to the computer. Well, I hate to admit it, but it is a good idea. Damn right it is, Ivy. Once this person finds out the email came from Teresa's computer, that little muchacha will be history. And no one will ever know I was behind the whole thing. How do you think this font will look on my resume? Well, I used the same font for the resume I gave your mother. I'll just go get a copy, and you can take a look. Okay. <clears throat> you know, my offer to build an addition under the cottage for you and Teresa still stands. <laughs> Sheridan, that's incredibly generous, but I have to start building a life of my own. You know, I'm no longer heir to one of the richest families in the world. I'm just an ordinary guy. Well, I beg to differ. You're not just some ordinary guy. You're one of the most amazing men I know. You have to say that. You're my aunt. Huh. See, there I go again. You know, you're not even my aunt anymore. I have to stop thinking like a crane. Well, whether or not I'm your aunt, I still love you dearly. Well, whether or not I'm your aunt, I still love you dearly. You know, now that I'm not a crane, we're going to be the target of gossip. What do you mean? Well, remember when we used to travel to Europe together? Uh, we, because we're so close, everyone would think we were husband and wife. <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> we just set them straight all the time. It's, it's strange. Now, everything I see reminds me of being a crane. You know, it's like this computer. When it was bought with crane money. My mother gave it to Teresa when she hired her as her personal assistant. You know... I think it's time for you to start focusing on the future instead of the past. I mean, just think of this as the computer of your future wife. You always know how to make me feel better. Oh, oh. oh your resume, did you lose it? Oh, no. Uh, these computers are incredible. Mother insisted that they have a complete backup system. Anything that has ever been deleted is in there somewhere. Oh, my God. What's wrong? Luis, do you see a future between you and Sheridan? That's all mine do. I love Sheridan very much. But you also loved Beth once, too. Yeah, but this is different. I never felt this way about a woman before. Well, I can see how deep your feelings are for Sheridan. But there's a difference between feelings and being ready to take the next step in a relationship. What are you saying? You're my son, and I love you, but I care for Sheridan deeply, and I don't want to see her hurt again. Look, I would never hurt Sheridan. I know. I know you wouldn't hurt her intentionally, but, you know, Sheridan's been through so much in her life. And she's fragile emotionally. She needs stability, commitment. Do you intend to provide her with that commitment? I think planting someone at the tabloid is the answer. I'll finally be able to find out who emailed them and ruined my life. Set that process in motion right away. Good. Now, once we get into the computer, will we be able to find out exactly who emailed it? Perhaps. With the newest technology, we can trace its origin and figure out who the culprit is. Good. Good. Well, you just get right on this, okay, Jerry? Thanks. Ivy, I truly hope you find the despicable person who sent that email. I suppose I should thank you for your idea of planting someone at the tabloid. Oh, it was my pleasure. Believe me. 
Rebecca, I have known you a very long time, and you have never, ever done anything out of the goodness of your heart. So why don't we just cut to the chase? What's in this for you? You look pale, Teresa. What's wrong? You know what? I'm fine. I just realized that there's an, an, another thing that we have to do for our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you never stop, do you? No, here, to just take a look at the resume and see if you like the font. Oh, great. Thank you. I do without you. It would be a disaster if the files about Ethan's paternity were still on the computer. Ethan would be furious if he found out that I knew that he was Sam Bennett's son and didn't tell him. And if the files are still on there, I have to erase them for good. Well, Ethan's convinced that there's no way he could lose the document with his resume, but it might be a good idea to save it anyway. Yeah, just remember what you name it, because I seem to remember a lot of files in there with my name on them. No, don't worry. I will do it right now. Well, here, I'll help you. I don't want to get it lost with all the other files. No, no, sweetheart. It, you know, it, it's, it's my computer and my, my, my private files are on there and it's... Well, why don't you want me to read any of them? Well, do you have other files with the names of other men on them? Hmm? No, yes. of course not. Uh, then let me see. No, I oh. think you two might need a little time alone. Okay. Hello. Oh. What's this? This file. What is it doing on your computer? I really, I'm sorry, I don't mean to pry. But do you see yourself making a commitment to Sheridan? Sheridan and I just started dating each other seriously. How am I supposed to know if she's the one? I understand your confusion, I do. But look how upset Sheridan got about the noodle test and the fortune cookie. She needs reassurance. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm always honest with her about my feelings. Well, that's good. But maybe it's not enough. What do you think I should do? Hmm. As much as I would love to help you, I think this is something you've got to do on your own. You've got to listen to your heart. But I will say this. If you don't see yourself making a commitment to Sheridan, tell her now. Don't let her get hurt. Tell me, Kay. Is there something else I need to know about what happened to Charity? No. I told you everything you need to know. I'm sorry for pushing you. I guess... I'm just not thinking clearly right now. You're right. Miguel, you're not thinking clearly. Which is exactly why you shouldn't try to open the portal to hell again. No, I can't let Charity stay in there another second. Lord in heaven, let my faith in you and my love for Charity give me the strength I need. Help me make the fires of hell reappear so I can bring Charity back. Let it be your will, Lord, for the portal of hell to be reopened. Let it be your will for me to rescue Charity. absolutely nothing to gain from all this. I just want to help you find out who sent the email. Now, excuse me if I find that just a little hard to believe. Oh, Ivy. We were once very, very good friends. I mean, I know we've had our troubles lately, but that doesn't take away all those wonderful years of shared friendship. I want you to find out who sent this email for, for your own peace of mind. And that's the only reason. Well, actually, there is a little something in it for me. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. You see, if you can be dragged through the mud, then so can I. So I want whoever did this to pay for it so they won't come after me. After all, very soon now, I will be a crane. Well, I knew there had to be something in it for you. But that's not what's important. 
What's important is that I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to find out who sent that email, and when I do, I'm going to destroy their lives, just like they destroyed mine. Now I know why you didn't want me to read these files. It's just that my personal diary's down there, you know, and my, that's... That's not the only thing you wanted to keep from me, but it's right here in front of my face. I deleted that file. Obviously you didn't. I can't believe you knew. I can't believe you knew and didn't tell me. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No. Sharon, sure, don't go. Look, there's... There's, uh, there's something I... I want to tell you. I think it's best if I tell you now. Okay. Now, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Your love for charity actually allowed you to summon the fires of hell in God's name. Your love must be pretty powerful. It's the most powerful thing there is. Miguel, you can't do this. I mean, at least the last time you went into hell, you had the ladder of Lucifer to hold on to. This time, you're not going to have anything. Kay's right, buddy. And we need to check and make sure that the portal's open in the living room. Otherwise, you won't have any way to escape the hellfire. I can't wait any longer. My love for charity will give me all the strength I need. Miguel, you Look, I have to rescue charity right now. No! no! no!